Hi. In this video, we will look at conditionality in surveys within mWater and Solstice. We will learn how you can use conditionality to make surveys more streamlined, more versatile and flexible, and more error-free by eliminating invalid or logically impossible options. In the system, you can make either individual questions or even question response options conditional on the basis of other questions in the survey. Let's take a look at this in practice. Here in the portal under surveys I've got a demonstration survey uh, which is a basic survey with a couple of sections and a number of questions. I'm on the design tab and as we can see the first question just asks for consent to proceed and what I want is for all the other questions to be conditional upon this question being answered yes. So the way this works in our platform is that instead of setting the conditionality here at the root question you set it for all the ones um, where you want it to show or not. Now this can be a bit tedious for individual questions so we can also do that at the entire section or question group level. So because I want all of these questions to only show if this question is answered yes I'm going to add first of all conditionality to the entire section B. I click Edit, and then I see the conditionality section here. I simply click Add Condition, and this brings me a list of all the questions in the survey. I select the one I'm interested in, and then I select the right logical operator. It can be whether the question was answered at all, or not answered, whether it is or isn't one specific response or whether it is or isn't one of many responses. Now we're only interested in the question being answered yes for these to show therefore I select is and then yes. We see the conditionality logic now appear above the section where it applies and we can easily check how this works in practice by going to the preview tab. Here we see what the enumerator will see in going through the survey. And as you can see, only the first section is now visible. If I answer this question with a no, then this is it for the survey. However, if I answer with yes, all the other questions in this section will show up. So that's a very powerful way of beginning with conditionality. I'll jump back to the design tab now. And let's look at section B. Here we have a simple section where one survey is covering two countries, Ethiopia and Tanzania. We have two numerical questions, each dependent on uh, the right question and the right country being selected. So I only want to show the Ethiopia sales question if Ethiopia has been selected and similarly for Tanzania I will only want to show this question if Tanzania is selected. So let's add this question level conditionality now. I will go to the Ethiopia sales question, edit it, and after the validation section I see conditions. I add the condition of the right question, which country is the survey for. Again, I'm only interested in being answered Ethiopia. So sales in Ethiopia only if the country is for survey is for Ethiopia. Same thing for Tanzania. I add a condition which country the survey is for is Tanzania. There we have it. Let's test this in the preview mode. Now again we must add con consent and we see that the two sales questions are now by default hidden. Uh, if I select Ethiopia I see the Ethiopia sales question. If I select Tanzania I see the Tanzania sales question. Let's go back to design and add some conditionality at the question response level. Here we have a multi-select question of the three different types of products that uh, can be sold in our example. But let's say that in Ethiopia only the first two options are even on the market and it's only in Tanzania where the Sato footstools are also being sold. Therefore there is uh, no point in showing the third option if Ethiopia has been selected because that can only lead to spurious data according to our example. So we can go into the question itself and here we see that there are conditions possible on individual question choices. So let's say that Sato footstools only shows if Tanzania is selected. I add a condition and then again I just choose 
the right question I'm interested in, in this case Tanzania. And now we will see, again from the preview tab, that if I select Ethiopia, I only see these two options. But if I see select Tanzania, I get the extra option as well. So this helps me sanitize the data and prevent spurious data from being entered in the first place. You can do this for as many questions as you like in the survey. Now, finally, we have this question about cause of low sales. So in case sales doesn't match some arbitrary number, then let's assume that the creator of the survey wants to guess at the cause of it. Here we can use advanced conditionality to say whether if either of these questions has a value less than 50, then the uh, this question should show. Because we are using conditions from two uh, questions where either of them is enough, I will use an advanced condition. And advanced conditions can become very, very complex and you can dive deeper into this. Choose advanced condition and I'm taken to the uh, schema data explorer which basically maps the survey I'm working on. And I will choose sales in Ethiopia. I want it to be the condition to say if it's less than 50. So I change the is operator to is less than and then I enter the value I'm interested in is less than 50. Now if I hover over this completed condition I see some logical operators I can choose from in this case or and uh, because either of these is enough to trigger it sales in Tanzania is less than 50. So if either of these questions has a response and the response is less than 50, then this question, what was the cause for low sales, will show up. Let's take a look at this in practice. Get consent and Tanzania. Now if I have a high level of sales, no problem, but if I only have 12, then we see this question due to the advanced conditionality. Same for Ethiopia. If I have under 50, the uh, question will show up. So between these basic and advanced functionalities for conditionality, you can really uh, improve your survey and make it, make it better for enumerators. So to recap, to use conditionality in M water and solstice, you do that at the survey level. You can use it to make surveys more streamlined by hiding options that aren't relevant in a given context. You can make it versatile. In our example, we created one survey for two countries. And you can eliminate errors, in this case by not allowing one of the SATO sales options to even be shown for a country where it's not actually for sale, in our example. You can add conditions at the question level or at the question section level, as we saw. Or you can go even deeper and add those conditions at the individual question response options. Hopefully this has been useful. Um, if you have any comments, suggestions or questions, feel free to get in touch. Thank you.